on this blind pick. Humpers, they do lock in the Moonkin with Daubers. Cervantes on that Unholy Death Knight and Drainer on the Mistweaver Monk, but we've seen how Method Black plays out this composition. I feel like Daubers is going to be forced defensive quite a bit. Drainer's going to have to do a really good job avoiding the mana rifts and coming from Raikou, but I think that's going to be something that's very difficult to pull off. So in the first map of a series on the Grand Arena, neither team knows what composition their opponents are going to be playing, and they have to guess based on the knowledge that they assume their opponents have. So the Pumpers lock in this composition, Balance Druid, Unholy Death Knight, Mystery Vermonk, because they are expecting Method Black to play an Elemental Shaman Frost Mage. Method Black, expecting that expectation, switched it up and played their Demon Hunter Death Knight. And they are more than warmed up on it after their series in the lower bracket against ABC. And I almost certainly guarantee that Method Black have the advantage in this matchup. Yep, Drainer gets caught into a stun as he moves in looking for a leg sweep. Vortex back, nicely done by Chaz, backing up his team. You can see Cervantes was looking for some pressure on Chaz, but Chaz was doing a good job running around the pillar, line of sighting that damage and forcing Cervantes to run back and turn his attention somewhere else in the matchup. And that looks to be Raikou in this particular setup. Interrupt onto Raikou's I beam immediately. Good, good job there by Cervantes, slowing down some of that damage. Drainer just healing up through the pillar, potentially looking for a drink, but with Swapsy having his pet on him, I think it's going to be really difficult for Drainer to actually sit down and get some mana. Yeah, it certainly is going to be. At least on the grand, it's more neutral playing field. Perhaps he can get away. If he is unable to, the mana rift that Raikou is running is just going to tap Drainer out on mana. And most importantly, when Drainer has run out of mana is that he will no longer be able to use Way of the Crane, which is a huge boost of damage and healing for the team. Luckily, he does have Innervate from Fnobber, so they can make it free. Perhaps if they can survive, I'm saying around the range of maybe 45 to 55% dampening, if they can survive to that point in the game, an Innervate, Way of the Crane, big push, perhaps they can kill Swapsy at that point. But of course, they have to make it to that mark, the 55% dampening mark, with that exact situation already set up. The Pumpers instead trying to mix it up, going after Chaz. I think Chaz is actually the most likely target to die before dampening. There's too much self-sufficiency between the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight. Your balanced druid is not going to build any momentum, especially not before dampening. They're basically immune to the damage the Boomkin does before dampening. Chaz isn't, and so he's the best target because he has no self-sufficiency. But still, if you focus too hard on one target against a Restoration Druid, he could just be in bear form, he can make sure that Life Bloom is on himself, and effectively not make himself a target, which is why the composition that Method Black are running is almost bulletproof. Yep, Fnobbers uses his incarnation, really not able to get too much. I know it was the mini incarnation, so there really wasn't too much of a waste there from Fnobbers, but I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Fnobbers has literally been in bear form for 99% of this game, just trying to get out as much damage as he can in Moonfire, trying to tank some of the spurs, but like you said, Sid, I just feel like with the way Fnobbers is forced to play this matchup, I don't know how they are going to find counter pressure. Potentially with Incarnation, that massive cooldown that the Moonkin has available, they can look for one-shot potential onto Chaz. He has no Bark Skin now. Potentially is a good opportunity for them to try to make something happen, but you can see Raikou and Swapsy kind of panicking, trying to keep Chaz alive as he is under immense pressure. Yeah, I mean, this is their only target is Chaz. And with Innervate Way of the Crane, which is what they did for that push, they actually bursted him down quite low. Perhaps this will work for them. Just tank it out in bear form. Make sure that you're not going to go down and maintain your mana the best that you can. And then when you've got your stun lock, your way of the crane, make for a big push onto the healer. Try and overwhelm him. The only thing is deeper in dampening. Darkness will protect Chaz from incarnation. Anti-magic zone will also support. So having these team-wide cooldowns make that option even less appealing. But really, that's the best one that I've seen so far from the pumpers here in game number one. Fnobbers is ready to go. Drainer moves in to try and back up, but anti-magic zone, this purple barrier traded out for incarnation, should be enough to protect Chaz. They're trying to cut through it, but there's so much magic damage. I guess because nice ring of peace, but darkness trades now. Maybe he gets punted out of the darkness. That could definitely work for the pumpers deeper into dampening. They line up three maledict trinkets, use the ring of peace during darkness, boost their damage with way of the crane. Way of the crane goes through 
anti-magic zone because it's physical damage. Although it negates Fnobbers and Cervantes, Drainer can then lead up and punish through with the three Maledict Absorption Trinkets. That's been my criticism, though, for the Pumpers throughout the entire tournament is that they have not coordinated the three of those trinkets together. But if they go for a one-hit wonder, a miracle hit on Chaz with a Ring of Peace like that from Drainer, I think they can take it. Drainer's been doing a really good job avoiding a lot of the mana risk from Raikou. You can see his mana quite well. Still very healthy in this matchup. And interestingly enough, Drainer's playing Grapple Weapon as an honor talent, so trying to just reduce Raikou or Swapsy's mana or damage whenever he can by removing their weapon and really preventing the amount of damage that they're able to do. It also stops them from using a lot of their self-healing. So Swapsy has no weapon, he can't use Death Strike. And obviously when Raikou has no weapon, he's going to be limiting the amount of damage he does, and that's going to prevent a lot of his self-healing as well. So I like the choice. Later on in dampening, it could be a big factor as to why potentially Raikou or Swapsy goes down if they use it correctly. Chaz gets pressured down once again, forced to use the Renewal. That's a massive cooldown that he has. He had some self-healing on himself. It seems like Chaz was prepared for the strategy, given that talent choice. He knew he was most likely going to be the one that does go down, so having that renewal as backup, I think, is intelligent. We're now at 6% dampening, and in terms of mana, these healers are relatively equal. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually starting to think this composition can work, but of course they have to execute on it. If they're not coordinated, if they don't properly use all of their crowd control at the same time, and all of their maledicts at the same time, then I don't think they're going to be able to take it. The sustain pressure is going to be in favor of Method Black due to their self-sustainability, having that Demon Hunter over the balance through it, as well as the heal over time effects. Imprison denies Drainer's way of the crane. Fenobbers dips low as a result. They overlap defensive cooldowns. Fortunately, it is not the Life Cocoon, so Life Cocoon is a good cycle with Bark Skin. You don't usually want to use it at the same time. Another kill attempt after Chaz here in Dampening. Anti-Magic Zone. Ring of Peace not going to be committed. They want to save Ring of Peace for Darkness. I think that's a wise decision as Darkness is guaranteed survival, whereas Anti-Magic Zone, there is some potential that Chaz will fall. Chaz is starting to struggle in this bulletproof composition that Method Black have crafted is starting to look like it could crack here to the pumpers in game one. Yeah, this is the first time we've really seen Method Black on the back foot in a matchup like this. The Pumper's coming up with a good answer, it seems. Fnobbers really hasn't been under too much pressure. Drainer's been doing a really good job avoiding the mana rifts as he gets caught into a double stun. That one does land, reducing his mana by quite a bit. I want to see what Chaz's mana is at at this particular point in the game. I think he's been in bear form for a while, haven't had an opportunity to see, and he is actually now secured a lead in the matchup. Drainer falling a little bit behind, but with Way of the Crane, at any moment, he could activate that to increase his damage and also top off his entire team if he really needs it. It's just such an expensive spell. You really have to be care careful when you use it. He opts to use it now, looking for some damage. Darkness gets dropped out by Raikou. That was interesting. You, well, how do you feel about that Darkness? He's just trying to go one for one with the Incarnation, but there was no stun and it wasn't on Chaz. Darkness needs to be saved, I think, to save Chaz. I mean, the other two targets have so much sustainability. We're not deep in dampening. It was definitely not of critical urgency to use it. I guess the, the downside of if you don't use Darkness as soon as Incarnation is activated is that the next time Incarnation comes on cooldown, if Fnobbers pulls it instantly, he won't actually have Darkness for 10 seconds and maybe someone dies in that window. So it's more of a precautionary mesh measure for the next incarnation. There is a downside to both options because darkness does not last for the full duration of incarnation. So Fnobbers should pop that, bait darkness, wait for it to fade, then go or wait for a ring of peace to knock the target out of its safety. But at this point, there's a mana advantage for the pumpers. Chaz is definitely falling behind in that regard and perhaps this composition can work. Although Method Black have an answer for it with their rogue mage. But if they lose the blind pick, they won't have the swing match advantage. So the pumpers have definitely come prepared here for the tournament if they can hold on a tad bit longer. Innervate available in 30 seconds, so that Innervate way of the crane push is going to be how the pumpers can get a kill on Chaz. Yeah, this damage on Fnobbers is becoming more significant, and that means Drainer is going to have to use a lot more mana keeping him alive. He can no longer just rely on the Serpent Jade statue and the Renewing Mist. He's going to have to start throwing out some enveloping mists, and that becomes very expensive for the Mistweaver Monk. Chaz now caught into a stun. The Pumpers have to make something happen. Method Black securing more and more of a lead in this matchup. Swapsy still with Anti-Magic Zone. Going to be making his team feel relatively safe. Drainer with an Innervate. Pops his way of the crane, looking for additional damage onto Chaz, who does drop lower. Iron Bark, the last line of defense. Anti-Magic Zone gets dropped out as well, so 
Method Black has traded out every single defensive that they have available at this time to keep Chaz alive during this way of the crane. Now Drainer almost completely tapped on mana as Raikou once again secures another mana rift. Are they looking to take down Drainer in this specific situation? It looks like Swapsy's turning his attention onto Drainer, looking for some pressure. Chaz still not out of the woods yet. I don't know how much longer he can survive, Sid. I mean, it's looking grim for both sides if you just look at the mana resource. That mana rift has finally tied mana at 31% dampening. Healing is going to be really difficult. It's going to be a race to the finish. Even though I say the pumpers have an opportunity to win, they haven't really been able to completely execute on it. The Ring of Peace defensively here, that Ring of Peace has to be used to deny darkness or anti-magic zone. I don't think they have enough damage to kill without it. Drainer is trying to just punch Chaz because he doesn't have mana to heal. That then portaling away at the end of the stun to recover. No innervate for some time. Drainer's gonna need to rely on Manatee to access that way of the crane, but even with that, it, he might not even have enough mana, especially if Raikou can keep hitting these mana rifts, that it's gonna be another minute and 46 seconds. Can Drainer heal his team for another minute and 40 seconds with zero mana? I don't really think he can. Fnobbers is so low, the sustained pressure in favor of Method Black, you can see that lack of self-healing really evident here as Fnobbers is likely to fall. They showed signs of life with this strategy, but ultimately Method Black are going to crush them in game one and gain the swing match advantage. We talk about those mind games too, and ultimately bringing in that. De Cervantes is what race is a human. Yep. He's going to be playing human in this matchup. Swapsy human as well. Have to see Drainer already getting targeted down by Raikou. In the last game, he did a good job avoiding the mana rifts. We want to see that once again. He's actually not playing the Relentless in this game, so it will be a little bit easier for Raikou to secure those mana rifts if they really need it. Now Chaz getting swapped to in this matchup. Nerd Rage intervening as well, putting on a little bit of pressure. Way the crane gets activated by Drainer. So they're looking for an all-in on Chaz. Can Chaz survive? This could be the potential darkness dropping in from Raikou as they both get double stunned. Raikou trinkets out, drops the darkness, ring a piece. Oh! Chaz getting lower, has to drink it out, kites away, gets gripped back in by Cervantes, and the pumpers destroy Method Black in game number two. Method Black going to be pumped down by the pumpers, and ultimately, we expect this game to go this way. I honestly want to see early pushes on Raikou or just a grip into Chaz and another all-in attempt like the one we saw on Tolvern Arena could potentially catch Chaz off guard as he is not playing that... Uh, that um, yeah, he's not playing that. And ultimately, we can see Revival. very quickly, the he's not... New one. Yeah, there you That's go. It. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you got it. Very early on, we saw Drainer actually roll. Now, most Mystery Monks, they opt into Chi Torpedo for their mobility instead of Tiger's Lust. But I think what Drainer's doing is very intelligent, opting into Tiger's Lust as a talent choice, which is going to allow him to help Nerd Rage get out of the various Novas that Raikou will certainly put him in in this matchup, giving him a little bit more uptime on his target. I think those Tiger's Lust can really add up in a matchup. So if you're a Mistweaver at home, definitely consider that if you are playing a Cleave setup like this and you're struggling against a mage team. Yeah, most certainly. Drainer is going to have to look for Drink Denial on Chaz, but on this large map, that is really a difficult task to actually accomplish. Riker getting bursted down, and in this push, they pull Temporal Shield and the Iron Bark, so for the next one, I would like to see an all-out Maledict aggressive push, get an Ice Block out of the way, set it up again, rinse and repeat, clean and easy. If they can pull that off, the Pumpers may be able to just rely on this Warrior Death Knight composition for the rest of the finals. Yeah, definitely an option for them. If they can win here, it's going to be huge for the Pumpers. This is the swing match that they need and we really can't count them out. We've seen them time and time again go up against this setup and really um, put a lot of pressure on the enemy team, forcing out multiple ice blocks in a matchup. They just sort of trip right on the finish line before they can actually close it out. It's usually the third uh, icy veins of the game that is enough damage for the Frost Mage to really punish these cleavers when the healing is reduced from Death Strike and Drainer's healing gets reduced, the crowd control changes are really adding up and Drainer actually eventually has been going out of mana in a lot of these longer games. Cervantes once again all over Swapsy trying to just put some pressure out there. Raikou's been doing a really good job kiting around. You can tell Method Black, they know they need to stall out the game. Raikou not afraid to just spam Polymorph on Nerd Rage. Um, burst him down when he does finally get away. That also buys Chaz a little bit of time to sneak away and get drinks, which he has done in this matchup. Now sitting at 100% mana, gonna be feeling very healthy.
Yep, and if you're just tuning in for the first time today, we are in the grand finals of the European Spring Season Cup number three. We're currently tied up between the Pumpers and Method Black, but Method Black were able to win the first map, which means they have the swing match advantage, and the Pumpers need to overcome that, which is currently what they're engaged in right now. They have to beat Method Black's Wizard Cleave composition on a very big map. However, in the second match, they picked the largest map and were able to overcome it. And you can't play the same map twice in a series. So if the Pumpers manage to win this, remove two of the biggest maps from the pool out of play, that could actually be a way for them to take the entire series is just off of maps alone because we have seen these Restoration Druids struggling in close quarters. There are more small maps than big maps and the Pumpers could take advantage of it. Ring of Peace knockback on Swapsy, pinning him in the corner as it looks like the Pumpers are trying to mix it up and go after a different target. Perhaps deep and dampening, they can do an overwhelming three-man push on the Elemental Shaman. Ice Block immunes you to all damage. Astral Shift does not, even though it is a damage reduction cooldown. It's not a complete immunity. There may be a chance that, uh, that Method Black get overwhelmed if the Pumpers go after Swapsy that deep into dampening. Yeah, this is the debut of the Pumpers this season in these tournaments, and it's really important to them that they get a first place finish. They need all the points that they can get if they want to try to start securing enough to make it to that spring finals. Whereas Method Black, they have already won the first two. If they can somehow win this game, win this series, they're going to be looking like one of the most dominant teams we've ever seen again. So this is a really good year for Method Black. They've seemed to brought all the right compositions, playing out the right strategies. Just such a solid team, very impressive and I feel like the Pumpers definitely have a lot of work ahead of them. Yeah, it's going to be a hard-fought battle for sure. They're map disadvantaged, comp disadvantaged, everything just disadvantaged here in game number three. But if they overcome it, I think they take the entire series. So let's see if they can keep it together. They cannot uh, battle against that disadvantage with a uh, half heart. They definitely need to be fully invested in this match. They can't afford to be lazy. They can't afford to be uncoordinated. They can't afford to be demotivated because even if there is only a 1% chance that they can do it, if they get it, they can get the entire thing. And they are a newcomer in terms of points. This would be definitely a phenomenal performance on their part to get a first place finish. They could overthrow the top four qualifying to the spring finals. So for sure the pumpers need to play this out it's going to be a long fatiguing battle they can't afford to make any mistakes throughout we've seen what happens if you make a mistake Chaz in game two erased within seconds of the match starting so can the pumpers keep it together and play at a top level throughout this extended series Sid I gotta say as much as you say the pumpers are disadvantaged in pretty much every regard you got to remember, Method Black did get knocked down by them already. We know that this is a team that, regardless of if they're disadvantaged, if they look disadvantaged here, it's a question of did Method Black figure out something new because the Pumpers have already shown that they can do it. I know you're also putting a lot of stress, though, ultimately on the fact that we did see Method pull down the first game in this series, which is going to have a big impact, but there is more potential for a shakeup in a best of seven than there is in a best of five. And the Pumpers are one of the only teams that have really been able to step to Method Black. I mean, we, we spoke to Swapsy, and Swapsy said at the end of the series, the first time these teams went to head-to-head, -to -head is that, well, we had the answer. We just didn't get to pull it off. Chaz had a bit of a technical issue, and that series was a bit of a write-off as a result. So uh, it may be the case that Swapsy was correct in his saying here that they had an answer for the Pumpers overall in the day. And because they won the blind pick, unless the Pumpers can overcome a disadvantage like this in Game 3, then they can always just set up the best location and the best composition. And I'm starting to think it may be unlikely. The Pumpers need to coordinate together. So far this match, I have not seen much in terms of coordination. Perhaps they're just saving their efforts for saving their gas for later in the fight when dampening is higher and then just try and pump it all out at that point. I'm not sure, but it, it's not looking good unless they can get it together. Yeah, this particular matchup is looking a lot different than we saw when ABC played against Nerd Rage. Raikou with his Water Elemental as well as Ice Nova, he's going to have a lot more roots for Nerd Rage to deal with, and I think it's going to be becoming increasingly difficult for him to get away. There's a Tiger's Lust coming in from Drainer, but he just gets immediately snared up once again. Now a knockback coming in from Swapsy as Cervantes and Nerd Rage trying to convene on one target. There's one Gladiator's Maledict. Swapsy actually getting lower. He's already used the Astral Shift as well as the Safeguard, just trying to kite back to the safety of Raikou, who's looking for some Polymorph spam. 
managing to find one on Drainer, but it's broken, unfortunately. Cervantes still trying to play aggressive with his anti-magic shell. Now, as I was saying, Raikou's build is going to be a lot more difficult for Nerd Rage to maintain the uptime we saw on Dalaran Sewers when he was playing against Alec. Yeah, most certainly is the case. Let's see if Drainer can keep it up. He's doing a great job so far in terms of efficiency, but they need more execution, they need more coordination. Obviously, uh, as I say that, it is really difficult to do. They're sticking to their split DPS strategy on a big map. If they get separated too much, it can be very difficult. But it does seem to be that they want to go after Swapsy, so they may not be looking for that three Maledict Ice Block push, three Maledict Ice Block push. Instead, three Maledicts, kill Swapsy, or we lose. And they might just be able to do it, playing at a disadvantage. Swapsy dips dangerously low. Chaz tr desperately trying to recover. The one real problem with hitting Swapsy on that Shaman is Ghost Wolf, which he can use to suppress that Chains of Ice snare from the Death Knight, kite away and avoid all damage. So Swapsy needs to be on his toes and use that Ghost Wolf effectively to deny this strategy from the pumpers. Yep, that is going to be a very effective counter to the Chains of Ice. Cervantes on that Unholy Death Knight has one of the best snares in the entire game. I think there's only a few as good, so definitely a really powerful tool, tool in order to stay on your target, but luckily for Swapsy with Ghost Wolf, he can suppress that entirely and make space. That's why often you'll see him go into Ghost Wolf when he's targeted, and he just runs in a straight line, trying to just create as much distance as soon as possible, relying on Ride Ku to make sure he's getting those snares on Cervantes and Nerd Rage to buy him a little bit of time and freedom. Now a nice little swap onto Raikou. Nerd Rage reconnects, looking for some pressure. Chaz responds with the Iron Bark, and now the Pumpers, 25% dampening, no Temporal Shield, no um, Iron Bark, no nothing really for Method Black. They need to start forcing out these Ice Blocks, and I think they could just get one right now, Sid. Yeah, this is a coordinated effort on the part of the Pumpers. They're definitely looking clean here in game number three. Can they take it all the way? If they manage to win on Tolveron and Ashamane, those are the biggest maps. You can't play them again. It's very very important. The Pumpers have an opportunity if they can just stick it out a little bit longer. Being a melee cleave against a Frost Mage is definitely not the best time, but they're doing great so far, and this is the first time that we've really seen Method Black struggle in the tournament setting. Perhaps the Pumpers could be the next rise to power in the European region, securing tons of damage here early on. Crowd control looks good. If they can get a second Ice Block before their Maledicts, they definitely can close. Cervantes protecting Nerd Rage there as he overextends. However, a big overlap in defensive cooldowns. Mistakes were made there on the side of the pumpers. They exposed themselves massively now with Animatic Zone, way of the crane out of the way, die by the sword. All three members now are limited. And as I said, they were doing great in terms of pressure and coordination. Their defense just got blown out. Yeah, they used literally pretty much everything they have. Drainer uses Trinket as well in that exchange, so he's very susceptible to a Polymorph. Now at 33% dampening, Cervantes could be a good target, but Swapsy under fire. Forced to trade out the Astral Shift. Ch Chaz does have a little bit of mana left in the tank, but Drainer has actually secured a lead, and if the Pumpers can maintain this pressure, swapping between Raikou, swapping between Swapsy, then Chaz is gonna have a really difficult time maintaining that mana later on in the fight. Yeah, it's going to be a very rough road for the Pumpers here, trying to battle it out to the bitter end despite the disadvantage. They set themselves up well aggressively, but then completely threw the fight potentially away here defensively. They're still trying to keep up the charge. All three members marching. Temporal Shield now out of the way. If they can get an Iron Bark and then make a coordinated play on those Maledicts, they can secure the second Ice Block, look to reset, and do it again for the kill. Will they be able to stay alive to that point? I, I feel like they were so close against ABC on Dalaran Sewers, and then Nerd Rage defensively just w wasn't re responding to the damage in time. So the Pumpers definitely have potential here against Method Black as they look to get the second Ice Block on this way of the crane. Uh -oh. Raikou needs to avoid Drainer at all costs, but intimidating shot with no Glyre's Medallion on three more seconds. They just need to connect. Nice mind freeze. Great coordination aggressively by the Pumpers. Their offense is way better. They can just squeak up their defense a little bit. They're going to be able to take this. Yeah, Raikou could be in a lot of trouble. Full Cyclone secured by Chaz onto Drainer. Cervantes and Nerd Rage caught in midfield, and things can snowball out of control quite quickly here for the Pumpers if they stay in the open for too long. But Raikou with no icy veins, I think he might struggle to find the pressure that he needs. Nerd Rage still sitting in the anti-magic zone as he charges forward with the life cocoon from Drainer. Drainer getting interrupted. 
Now no. up with the crowd control. Nerd Rage getting bursted down lower. Raikou in a lot of trouble as well. Iron Bark, the last line of defense for Chas to actually keep him alive. Raikou trying to kite away. Beautiful Ring of Peace knocking Raikou back into Cervantes. Nerd Rage reconnects. And this is trouble time for Raikou. Temporal Shield, he has to hold on a little bit longer. Chas has no mana in execute range. And the Pumpers managed to do it on the swing match, turning this series in their favor. You know, in that matchup, Sid, when you were casting, you just said the Pumpers have everything against them. If Method Black can't do it here, this is where you start to get scared. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to see exactly what they can get done. We've seen this matchup play out a few times, and normally it takes a lot of dampening for it to end, and I honestly, I expect that's exactly where we're headed to Dampenville. But I think there's one opportunity that the Pumpers have, and that is a coordinated assault with their Gladiator's Maledic Trinket. And just with the way that the Pumpers play it, where Nerd Rage is splitting onto Raikou, Cervantes is splitting on Swapsy, they really limit the amount of output that Method Black has, at least in the early game. But this is a good amount of pressure on the Nerd Rage. Could force out some defensive cooldowns. Already banking an anti-magic zone. So they got that. They also got the uh, Life Cocoon from Drainer. So not a bad start here for Method Black. Yeah, Method Black looking pretty solid in this opener so far. Shaz gonna activate that Innervate so he can rotate that back up as soon as possible. Raikou now though getting gripped in with the Asphyxiate. You can see Drainer following that up as well with a leg sweep. Nice ring of peace, but Raikou is going to blink out of there. Swapsy, of course, playing the goalkeeper role essentially. Every single time we see the pumpers going into pump, we see Swapsy shutting that down, hexing the healer. There is no curse to spell on the side of the pumpers. And then of course, oh, Cervantes is playing Dark Simulacrum. I don't what did you steal there, Cervantes? We will have to find that out soon. But as I was saying, Swapsy, his role is to basically shut down the push as it happens and count the pressure, forcing Nerdridge to run back before Raikou is in that moment where they don't have Iron Buck, they don't have the Temporal Shield, and they force out that Ice Block. Chas, though, going to be sitting down for a drink. Cervantes taking a surprising amount of damage here, and we see Drainer as well is looking to push in. Swapsy, though, what is going on here? Chas going to have to trink it out of that asphyxiate stun. Swapsy going to use his Dark Iron Ooh. Warp Racial as well. A lot of damage here. Astral Ship being forced out. A lot of cooldowns here on Swapsy. And this is what happens when you don't have that big map to work with, man. Yeah, that is true. Swapsy having a difficult time kiting. And the Pumpers were able to get Gladiator Safeguard, Astral Shift, Iron Bark, Trinket. Basically everything you want, but that was the push with their Gladiator's Maledic Trinkets. Without that healing reduction, I feel like it's going to be hard for them to actually take down Swapsy pre-dampening. Nerd Rage now getting Life Cocoon. Raikou trying to find some damage here. Actually managed to find a full sheet, but a beautiful pre-Life Cocoon. Drainer realizing he wasn't going to be able to get out of line of sight of that Polymorph. Throws out the Life Cocoon, and that's going to deny any sort of pressure coming in from Method Black. Raikou sort of realizing it. And this is unfortunate Ooh. for Raikou as well, because he actually did use his Icy Veins there. So Cervantes just stole a Polymorph. That's why Shaz is in form right there. Look how Shaz is switching in and out of form. He knows Cervantes has the Polymorph, and there it is. Full Polymorph uh -oh. now. Swapsy in big, big trouble. Definitely caught into a full stun. Can he survive? Is there any follow-up crowd control? Chaz gets gripped in, but there's just no follow-up CC. Very nice ring of peace keeping Swapsy in the line of fire of Cervantes and Nerd Rage, but he seems to be easily able to kite away, get topped off through that iron bark. And now Chaz smartly already running away, sitting down for a drink. And before I could say anything, he is topped completely on mana, resetting this fight. Yeah, and this is the reason why we consistently say we want to see these pushes happen on the Frost Mage, not the Elemental Shaman, because if you take a look at Swapsy's defensive cooldowns, you can see his Astral Shift is now back up, his Trinket will slowly rotate back up, Chaz's Iron Bark as well as his Trinket are coming back up any second, which means that the game is basically entirely reset. Now, had they done that on the Mage, the Ice Block is a much longer cooldown, and that opens up more windows of opportunity as we see another full Hex here, landing by Swapsy, Chaz is going to go in for the Cyclone, but Cervantes shuts it down beautifully done there and that's gonna force out the life cocoon there from Drainer as Nerdridge is looking at Raikou to try to counter pressure. Yep, good counter pressure here, good counter engaged by the pumpers. Raikou getting lower, he gets interrupted on Frost, a bit of a scary moment but with Iron Bark, oh Chaz actually getting caught into a polymorph once again. Raikou has to be a little bit careful. Cervantes has been stealing these polymorphs consistently, banking a lot of defensive cooldowns. Now Chaz caught into a fear that breaks. Nice tremor from Swapsy as backup. That's going to free up Chaz and allow him to get some healing rolling. But 
In the future, Raikou, you need to be very careful with these dark simulacrums coming in from Cervantes. He's definitely getting the better end of those exchanges. Ooh, Nerd Rage. What is going on here? Nerd Rage is sitting in that anti-magic zone, and Drainer doesn't have his way of the crane right Ooh. now. No, oh, nice. That was so such a nice Cyclone from Chaz. Cyclone's Nerd Rage. Cyclone's his trinket. Denies Drainer any healing. They need to hold on a little bit longer. Drainer manages to find the heals that he needs and now has Life Cocoon, but that was a beautiful offensive push. And I feel like Method Black, they're actually playing much more aggressive in this matchup than we saw the last game. They're trying to close it out a little bit earlier on. You can even see that from Swapsy, right? We talk about his positioning so many times. He's finding himself much more out in the open here, creating pressure himself, using those thunderstorms as soon as they get on top of him and still creating that space, but he's still getting into the front lines more. And Nerd Rage going to be the target yet again. And we're going to see that overlap here. As soon as the Life Cocoon does go out, Trainer going to be locked up in that bash for a little bit into a hex, but he is going to be able to get out of that. Nerd Rage healthy for now. Yeah, I don't like that War Banner from Nerd Rage. Drainer had already trinketed the Polymorph, so that incoming Hex was actually on diminishing return. Now there's going to be a pretty big opportunity here where Drainer doesn't have anything to work with. No Trinket, no Life Cocoon for a little while, and Cervantes also doesn't have that Anti-Magic Zone. However, he does have that Dark Simulacrum. He's going to be looking to steal that next Polymorph from Raikou. There's also an opening here where Chas doesn't have his Trinket just yet, so Raikou needs to be very, very careful here uh, with the next couple of seconds before Chaz Trinkets rotates back up and Drainer as well and Nerdridge they're gonna just stay back here for a second realizing that that life cocoon isn't ready Cervantes taking a lot oh, of damage man. though has to activate that Iceman 42 that's a three minute cooldown right there getting uh, netted for uh, Method Black I don't know what's going on with Method Black, but they have turned up the heat here in game number four on Tiger's Peak. So much more pressure for them. And the Pumpers have had to play much more defensive on this map than we saw on Ashamane's fall. Grip now onto Raikou. A little bit of burst damage. Beautiful ring of peace once again, knocking Raikou out of line of sight. But with Blink, with Shimmer, Raikou should be able to get to the midfield, and he does. Lands a full polymorph on Drainer. Cervantes caught in the midfield. Raikou looking for some damage once again. Nerd Rage basically hitting the only target that he can on Swapsy. Another preemptive Life Cocoon there, denying that setup from Drainer. Uh, very nicely done. Unfortunately, Method Black really not able to find the pressure that they needed with that full polymorph. Drainer's been doing a really good job with those preemptive plays, with those Life Cocoons, making sure he knows when he can't get away from Raikou's Shimmer polymorphs, he can just throw out that Life Cocoon and absorb a lot of the incoming damage while he sits at crowd control. And look at the formation here from Method Black. You have Raikou on one side of the pillar, swaps you on the other side of the pillar, but now we see another push. Probably going to be deflected with the Iron Bark. There it is. Nice Temporal Shield as well, but Raikou's not out of the woods just yet. He really needs to hold on to this ice block here. And he does play it greedily. That temporal shield will proc. So he's going to hold on to that. It would have been really, really dire for Method Black had uh, the Pumpers forced out that ice block right there. Now the pressure is reversing. Nerdridge, though, again with a beautiful war banner. Swaps is going to kill that off. Chas landing a nice cyclone. And Method Black actually has pressure on two points here as Cervantes doesn't have his, uh, anti uh, his uh, ice bomb fortitude to work with. And Nerdridge, as well, doesn't have his defensive cooldowns for a while. Drainer, who are you going? to be healing. Yep, this is exactly what we want to see. The Pumpers, they push in, they manage to get Iron Bark and Temporal Shield, but that's all they get. After that, Method Black, they have the counter pressure that they need to force the Pumpers to run line of sight, and now you can see Chaz, he has Iron Bark. Raikou, he has Temporal Shield. So Method Black, they have to make sure, although they trade out those defensives, they need to buy themselves enough time to get counter pressure and actually force the Pumpers to play a little bit scared, which we have been seeing in this game. I really like what Cervantes is doing right now. He's trying to play close to Chas because of that mana uh, difference there. They know that they need to play aggressive here. Chas wants to go for drinks as his mana is super low, and this is the push to do it in. Now, this could potentially be an ice block coming from Raikou very soon after this push because now Drainer could activate his Way of the Crane, and he might do it. And there it is, Way of the Crane. Big damage on Raikou. This is potential ice block for Raikou. He needs to be very, very careful. Chas caught up in that uh, intimidating shot, and now Drainer as well is going to be able to paralyze Chas. Here is no Temporal Shield active, but uh, Chas has the Iron Block to deflect with. Is it going to be enough, though, as those Maledicts connect? Beautiful Ring of Peace as well, but I think Ra Raikou might be able to stabilize here as we see a beautiful Hex onto Drainer. That's going to cost him a lot of mana, though, with that Way of the Crane push. Yeah, definitely a very expensive spell for Drainer. That's why he really has to pick the moments in the game where he uses it and looks for that offensive push. I didn't mind it there, but Chas still had the Iron Bark and the Temporal 
Temporal Shield, the Raikou, so there really wasn't that much of a threat onto Method Black. They had to hold on a little bit longer and push through. You can see the Pumpers, they want to continue the fight, push in, try to take Raikou down, but they're just unable to find the damage that they really need. Raikou's been doing a really good job with his kiting. War Banner gets dropped out by Nerd Rage, but I don't think that actually was super effective on any crowd control, at least that I saw. Once again, Drainer Trinkets out. Way of the Crane, Raikou forced into his first Ice Block. I don't mind him using it there a little bit preemptively, a little bit scared. I think that's exactly what he needed to do. Drainer may have overcommitted. He has no Trinket, no Way of the Crane, almost completely out of mana. Raikou still has the Iron Bark from Chaz, but they're looking for a final push in this game to take Raikou down. Swapsy has to do a great job in this situation, looking for counter pressure on his team to force Cervantes and Nerd Rage to back off just a little bit. Yeah, they need to find a Polymorph now onto Drainer and a lot of pressure onto Nerd Rage because Chaz needs to go and drink. There's the full Hex onto Drainer. Can we see the damage, though? It looks like it's getting reversed here. Chaz has to drink it out. Raikou in big, big trouble has to activate that secondary Ice Block. And the reason why the Pumpers are just all of a sudden playing super aggressive is because Chaz is out of mana. They need to stop him from drinking. And the way to do it is with this pressure. Chaz, again, though, getting caught up in that Paralyze. Raikou's going to have to activate the Temporal Shield. This could be big trouble, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely huge trouble for Raikou. Once again, a beautiful ring of peace coming in from Drainer, but now Drainer oh. in a full polymorph. Raikou looking to get aggressive once again. Cervantes steals it, but unfortunately it breaks on Chaz, so Chaz not going to be sitting that polymorph that Cervantes was able to take from Raikou. And this is what we see. Nerd Rage and Cervantes, they could be locked down at 35% dampening. This is the critical mass point in the game where Method Black can just take someone down quite easily. Nerd Rage getting lower. Beautiful lightning lasso, and I don't think Drainer has the healing to hold on much longer. Method Black ties up the series, but the last game was just so important for the Pumpers. They still have that advantage in the swing match. That was a very close game as well. Met some of their CCs because they want to CC the way of the crane. And also, I want to see them just put pressure on the Fnobbers and then later on in dampening, try to take down Cervantes. And I think that's going to be a really, really big thing for them. Maybe even swap over onto Drainer if he gets too frisky. All right, time to pump, pump, pump it up. We're getting it started. We can see that Fnobbers is going to be in on that Druid. Going to be coming in with that Incarnation, too, in the opener. He's going to get knocked all the way down off of the platform. But this Incarn, look for that to be lit up. Look for Fnobbers to be on fire because that Incarn packs such a heavy punch for the Moonkin. And we are going to see, though, it is Drainer who is going to have to trade out that Life Cocoon. He's inside of the Polymorph. He gets the re-Polymorph on him as well. Raikou was able to put out so much pressure there inside of his icy veins and Bobber's still going to be in bear form here and he's going to have to hang out in that quite a bit if Raikou can keep this pressure up. Yeah, Fnobbers, this is the downtime where they don't have a lot of crowd control or burst damage with cooldowns, so it's just better to stay in bear form as a balanced druid. Your damage outside of Incarnation is almost non-existent, so just reduce the damage you take, make sure that you survive until a window of opportunity where you can actually make things happen. Also, Mistweaver monks are highly susceptible to crowd control, so Polymorph currently cast on Drainer means that Drainer is not healing Fnobber, so by being in bear form, he reduces the damage and can stay alive in the fight. Opportunities where they could maybe attack back outside of Incarnation is the Solar Beam, but because Chaz is playing a Druid, they are going to need to land that on a cast, but Druids in this meta not going to be casting very much, so unlikely that Chaz even gives that opportunity for Fnobbers. Chaz getting bounced off the side with that Ring of Peace, not really too consequential. Fnobbers now knocked the corner, Lightning Lasso attempt gets broken up. Good denial there on that Lightning Lasso. Very important that you interrupt it or trade a cooldown. It definitely deals the highest damage of any spell on Method Black's team. Yeah, and right there, Chaz actually roots up the pet behind the pillar, but never mind. We see a big swap here onto Chaz. That could be big trouble. No, he's going to be able to escape from that. So what Chaz likes to do is he likes to root the pet up behind pillars, and then when he actually goes to activate his stealth, that pet aggro drops, and that does allow him to reposition and potentially get drained. The problem is it's very, very difficult to do on this map, especially when Drainer and Cervantes both are being on top of him, but now they punish Drainer for trying to stop that drink with a bash into a full sheep. They don't seem to be able to find that much pressure, and again, every single time they make these plays, Chas will cross the map, allowing his wizards to tee off damage onto Cervantes. That's gonna force out the life cocoon. Chas now looking for the stealth, not able to find it as Drainer chases him down once again.
And it's very difficult to get the life cocoon off script, though. And th that's because of something that Sid was actually talking about. We see a very short cooldown on that life cocoon. Are we seeing a lot of those Azerite traits being the focus here, Sid, to make sure that you can just have that short CD on such a powerful cooldown? Yeah, Burst of Life and Chrysalis are pretty much mandatory for Mistweaver right now. So Burst of Life and Azerite trait, reducing the cooldown of life cocoon by 20 seconds. Chrysalis and Honor Talent, reducing the life cooldown of life cocoon by 45 seconds, making it a 55 second cooldown. And it fits into that one minute cycle. It pairs really well with classes like, in this case, Death Knight and Balance Druid for Barkskin for the Druid, Anti Magic Shield for the Death Knight. And you just rotate between those two cooldowns every minute, making an efficient trade. Now, obviously, you can deny Life, co life Cocoon's usage by crowd controlling the Mistweaver, such as a Polymorph, which is currently active on Drainer. During this time, Swapsy then looks to coordinate Lightning Lasso. Fnobbers then denied this situation, which otherwise would have been scary because they removed removed the potential of Life Cocoon, and Fnowers didn't have Bark Skin. So he then uses his Gladiator's Medallion, which removes Lightning Lasso, stops all of his damage, and allows him to get back to the pillar. So good defensive trades on the side of the Pumpers. Cervantes now looking to turn up the heat as it is their turn to start to counter-aggress while Lightning Lasso is on cooldown. You can also see time and time again, Fnobbers is going to be stuck in that bear form. The pressure that's coming out on him, you can see the Lightning Lasso right now. He's also inside of that AMZ, but he's forced into that defensive place and when he's in that he's not going to be able to get out any pressure he's actually barely doing any damage at that time Raikou actually going to be the one though that does get stuck in that beam you talk about how that beam can create more goes a lot of the time that is going to be focused on the healer you get out the root as well they can't move out if you're inside of that giant ray of light you are silenced so sometimes you'll actually see gnomes be used so you can get out of it with escape artist here though obviously you are going to be a druid that's going to limit what you can play and night elf is absolutely absolutely crucial for those drinks so different tactics need to be employed to avoid goes from that but incarn activated now and that is the main setup that we expect from the pumpers yeah and like once again now chad's gonna be looking for that drink drainer is chasing him around now we see the counter pressure here onto swapsy as a result of chas going for those drinks time and time again there's two ways to stop it of course you have cervantes with his pet and with his death and decay drainer of course also chasing chas a lot as he's looking for another stuff he might find it no, he's not going to find it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the other way is to stop it by shutting down uh, Shaz's ability to drink with counter pressure on Swapsy or Raikou. Swapsy always going to be a juicier target because Raikou sometimes would just trade out his ice block for a drink. It's a good trade to make. Now, Chas actually does get the stealth off. Now he needs to sneak away. Drainer is looking for him. He doesn't find it, though. But now they need pressure here on the side of Method Black to allow Chas to get this drink. Cervantes realizes it, putting up a lot of pressure here onto Swapsy. Swapsy, that gnome racial as well, paying dividends there as it allows Cervantes to reconnect with that Nova. So, uh, Shaz actually does get a little bit of a sip there, and now Fnobers is looking to get a Cyclone out, gets a nice counter spell there from Raikou. Another Polymorph as well onto Drainer to kind of weather the storm here. We see Cervantes taking the brunt of the damage right now, but now the, the pressure should be swapped over to Method Black. If you take a look at the Twitch extension now available, you can check out the gear talents that the players are running, and Chaz has completely changed his build versus this Death Knight and this Balanced Druid composition. There's obviously a lot of nature and arcane damage, so he has opted to run the Mark of the Wild Honor Talent, which reduces those schools of magic by 15%. He has also decided to run Cultivation and Scenarian Ward for more consistent healing throughout the fight, which is why his mana is looking so much better. I like these adaptations in his build when facing this composition. And most curiously, which I've never even considered playing Druid myself, is he's running Lively Spirit, which gives you 0.5% of your mana back for every spell that you cast during Innervate. So you can get a, maybe 4 or 5% of your mana back on your Innervate on top of making your spells free. Chaz is playing way more efficiently, completely changed his build to counteract the damage style that the pumpers have brought, and that build change might be enough for Method Black to overcome an uphill battle. It's funny, because you, you may be like, wait, a healer's using Lively Spirit? Yeah, actually, it was a weird adaptation that we saw with the Moonkins deciding to use that last season. They were using it for big damage on their Star Surges. Now we're seeing healers actually go into employing it. Swapsy going to be taking some pressure here. He's caught up in the leg sweep. Yeah, and I want to see Shaz go for a Cyclone here as he has his innervate back up. Actually, I don't think, is he playing Cyclone, Sid? 
Uh, is, yeah, he is. is okay. He? They're yes. right there. So there's the Cyclone. Uh, he doesn't manage to find it, though, with that innervate, unfortunately for him. However, Chess has gotten a drink, and this is really Method Black's strategy. They need to conserve Chess's mana as much as possible. As we already mentioned, the Mist Weaver, up until dampening, will be the most mana efficient healer. And now Chess has tied up his mana completely. This is a moment where the Frost Mage and the Elemental Shaman are going to be able to force Nobers into that bear form with his incarnation up as well now. The Pumpers on the back foot. This is looking good for Method Black right now. Nobers not going to be able to dish out any damage in that bear form, but now he's switching back out, doing a lot of damage with that Star Surge, but Swapsy again with the Lightning Lasso is trying to force him back into the bear form. Chas now at the back of this pressure, looking for a drink. Can Riker find the Polymorph, though? He doesn't manage to get it onto Drainer. Drainer, though, going to find himself getting bashed up into a Cyclone. Nice Solar Beam as well onto Raikou, trying to counter-aggress as we see the Maledic Trinkets being comboed with that CC. Now they have so much pressure that Chas most likely is going to look for yet another drink after he throws out his Maledic Trinket right there. I think this was a smart move on Chaz's part. I mean, his mana is in a way better spot than the last time when facing against his composition. And we saw ABC almost kill Cervantes in this specific matchup. So if Chaz's build change can buy him enough mana, get his team deep enough into dampening to kill Cervantes, I actually think Method Black may be able to take the swing match back in their favor for a game seven, which could just secure themselves the entire tournament. Sid, you don't get to go into Incarn very often. And we talk about that's really the main time when we're going to see Snobbers be able to get damage out. Both of the last two Incarns, we see him sitting in bear form for majority of it. How far behind is that going to put the pumpers in the department of pumping? Well, I mean, it's, it's their only win condition. Their only kill window is during Incarnation, at least before heavy, heavy dampening. But Mark of the Wild then basically suppresses the damage over time effects of the balance druid to the point where they're utterly useless. So what Fnobbers is doing is basically just soaking damage in bear form, pretty much playing a tank spec and not able to get any sort of counter pressure out for his team. And I actually think that Method Black, if they can beat this comp, it may end up being that Drainer needs to rely on the Warrior Death Knight for the rest of the series. This may not even be an option anymore due to Chaz's talent adaptation. I feel like these are some of the texts that maybe we did hear whispers of as we see once again some crisp CC coming out. Fnobber still taking the brunt of the damage, but Chaz all of a sudden, it's just like a complete cracking of the code that he has figured out. You got Raikou with both of his ice blocks. Swapsy, I don't even think he's had to press a wall yet, even though he has received so much pressure. We're already at 32% dampening. A little bit of pressure is going to come out here on Raikou, and once again, Chaz is going to be able to trade out his iron bar. Raikou isn't even thinking about out in that ice block yet. Knobbers is going to be the one that has to get scared there. He does have the renewal. Is he going to be have to use it? He does. That's going to keep him healthy for now, but in bear form, he's still taking damage. Drainer stuck in that clone. Yeah, and we see Cervantes now as well, trying to just line of sight here, trying to drag everybody back here. But Chas finds himself a nice opportunity to potentially go for a drink as he is always positioned behind Raikou. Raikou is always kind of the defense between Chas and Cervantes. Cervantes is going to be looking for it. He might have to activate his anti-magic shell. We see the first one in the brain. Now big, big damage here onto Swapsy. This could be potentially the first astral ship of the game. Swapsy is being a little bit greedy with it, though. Chas does have his iron bark active. The gladiator safeguard is procced as well. Swapsy be running on that wolf, trying to just escape the fray here. We see the, the incarnation as well from Knobbers being active there. And now the counter pressure is happening. Raikou landing a nice polymorph. Nice cross CC with that Nova as well on Cervantes. Knobbers going to be forced into bear form with those last couple of seconds on his incarnation. But Swapsy's not out of the woods yet. Just going to look to top him off and then look for another drink. Such a huge squelch of a push there. I mean, Knobbers is coming in with his in card. Now he's going to get that short in card here. Drainer using the way of the crane, and you can see silenced once again is going to be Fnobbers. Swapsy doesn't even have to use the wall. 41% dampening. You have your biggest offensive cooldowns being activated, and they don't even get the wall. Now Cyclone at about half health when he has that pressure from the Icy Veins as well. Raikou is going to be a little tilted at this moment. A nice follow-up as well. That's going to first the, force the first block of the game as well. Very nice follow-up there. A little bit of an overlap too. I mean, now it's not looking so hot. The pumpers have made it into deep dampening and they are creating situations where Chaz simply cannot oh. heal. Raku gets taken out in game number five. Pumpers <laughs> advance to match point. 
Method Black fortunately have no one more opportunity, but it's really not looking good. It looked so grim. Circles around it, so those are the three main spots. And also, if you're a mist weaver, if you go up on that stair right there, and you yeah, you can actually use your transcendence and go into the room. And here we go. <sighs> Mugambala for the second time of the year. The long boys, they are watching. And we can see what they see right now. It's just going to be Draenor and Nerdrage going to be hanging out in that room with Cervantes as well. And Sid, this is the strategy that we like to play. I mean, that room is definitely <laughs> good defense and good cover against arranged classes. So it is not surprising to see them want to battle it out in the room. And this is why it's a bit of a stalemate in terms of the compositions that both sides have brought. The casters want to play in open field. The melee want to play in close quarters and this map has both of those options available so neither team really wants to give up that advantage and you really have to assess who has the upper hand in dampening i think if drainer has mana in dampening this benefits their team more to wait i love chaz's little recon mission there he goes down in cat form he goes yep they're still in the room. He runs back to his team nice and safe, gets a little drink. Now we can see Raikou. He's going to drop that orb inside, try to harass them, push them out. But there are plenty of corners to chill in here. It's a very big room. It's a big room. It, it really it's a is. big room, but also a very small room. So, yeah, really Method Black. They don't want to be confusing me, Ben. The room of necessity. That's what it is. Yep, it's everything you want it to be. And this, this arena really is sectioned off. That's how I feel about you, Ben. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this this arena is sectioned off into basically multiple arenas, and it looks like I feel like the pumpers potentially getting. I don't know. Sometimes we see t teams do this, where at the beginning of the game they'll sit back, they'll do nothing, they'll wait, and then they get bored or impatient. I don't know which one it is, and they'll try to push in. But I feel like the pumpers, if this is their game plan, where they want to wait for dampening, they just need to be patient with it, force Method Black to sort of push in, or just wait for the game to go to dampening and see exactly what happens. I don't know who has the lead. I think for the pumpers, if we do get deep enough into dampening, all of a sudden Raikou with his frozen orb and blizzard will be able to punish them quite a bit. But that also leaves Method Black susceptible to an easy all-in on Chaz or potentially Swapsy. So there's something that I've always wanted to do on this map, and I've never had the opportunity until right now because usually I'm getting carried super hard by Sid. I've always been curious how many dinosaurs there actually are here. Are there two long boys? Or are there three? How many pterodactyls are there? Spoon, if, if you can kind of move that maybe we're on vanguard's pov right now major shout out to all of the guys in the back our spectators do a fantastic job i see two long boys i think there's four I, are there four i think there's four i'm really bad at math i can't even I count apparently one two, two on our screen, on our right screen and then i think they're paralleled on the opposite side so there's four mm. Mm. Drainer, drainer. Oh no, there's only three. <laughs> that's a that's a nice Wait, no there's four. There's, no, there's four. four there's four there's four there's four and then i think there are two uh Petries, too. There's one, two, yep, so four dinosaurs on this two map. pterodactyls. The pterodactyls, two of them. Four long boys. Drainers just dancing. I in think the corner. they brought their autograph books. They want it, well, they want someone to sign it, but everyone's just ignoring them. All right, well. Right, oh. Well, I guess this is. Uh, the this pterodactyl map. doesn't <laughs> like this strat. <laughs> we need the ogre. Where's the ogre? Yeah. <laughs> just yelling, yeah. screaming at you. For now, this, I guess, comes down to theory what's going to happen in dampening. Um, uh, who does the pumpers, who is their best option if they're going to try to stall out the game until healing is reduced? What is their all-in target? Certainly not Raikou? Yeah, not Raikou. Swapsy or Chaz for sure should be the all-in target. Um, the problem with Chaz is that if he doesn't go down in the stun lock, then he can blink away and it's very unlikely that you actually connect to Chaz without investing your death grip. So that means that Chaz will just blink away and actually get away and survive. If you go after Swapsy, well, he doesn't need to die in the stun, but he has the thunderstorm as well. He doesn't have, uh, you know, a blink in the same sense as Chaz does, but he swaps he can still get away with that ghost wolf. But then you have to rely on doing a whole bunch of damage in the stun and then kind of killing him with ranged abilities before he gets away out of your range. Now, Raikou is just not going to be a target at all if you wait for deep dampening because he can just simply ice block on high HP, trinket, double blink. He has the most amount of mobility. And the story really is all about the mobility here now 
I think Chess is the best target because you can just kind of grip him in, get the triple mana dict combo, and then after that, you can just chase him down with Drainer's damage and Nerdridge's damage. Cervantes doesn't necessarily need to connect there with the, uh, with his actual melee abilities. He can kind of just be at far, spam out the chains, spam out the death coils, and still contribute that way with his pet as well. So uh, I think Chess for sure should be the target, but Swapsy could also be the target. It all depends on position. Chess, though, needs to be aware of this and just be outranging Cervantes' death grip at all costs. Because if he does get gripped in and fall behind, it's super, super difficult for him to recover. It's also super difficult for Swapsy and Raikou to counter pressure in that scenario. What do we think the critical mass is? I mean, we That's just... Yeah, when do they start yeah. fighting? Yeah, when do we start fighting? I mean, for the Pumpers, this is match point. If they win this, they win the entire tournament. So, very important. They're trying to secure as many points as possible. So, if they feel like their best opportunity, wait for that all in. They're just taking advantage of the map the best they can. You really can't blame them. Method Black, they're going to be looking to drag them in the open. I, I'd wait till like 70%, right? You go full on. Are we breaking records? I don't even, uh, well, you don't, really need no. to, you don't really need to do that, right? I, I don't think you gain anything extra They should that. just because they can. Yeah, but I don't it, know if they win with that. Yeah, it, 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 could go, it could go the opposite way just because of Lightning Lasso, right? Like, it, Lightning Lasso is super scary. You Lightning Lasso, you get your Maledict in, and all, all of a sudden it's just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We're going to a game number seven. I, I do think the Pumpers can go pretty deep into Dampening, and their push will be able to, to handle it. You trade out different things like the Anti-Magic Shell. You can handle a lot of that pressure that's going in. You have the AMZ to keep Nerd Rage safe as well. But I do think you want to go to the Critical Mass. And, yo, I... Oh, never mind. I thought that was Bud Somdi. I was like, I didn't know he was here. I thought that was a dinosaur. I love Bud Somdi, dude. He's <laughs> I so I thought cool. that was the seventh dinosaur. Yeah, Bud yeah. Somdi <laughs> roasted me when I died in a world quest. I don't like him very much anymore. Yeah, me too. See, I would never let you die in a world you, quest. As much you, as you have my back in arenas, I could have you in world quests and LFR, man. I well, got you. Bud is like rich. He just roasts me for not ice blocking in that one tournament years ago. I am the low of the roast. I am the low of the roast. I'm the low of all tournaments past. But, uh... So, if we do hit about 60-70% dampening, I actually think Method Black should push into that room with the Raikou leading the charge, kind of being the damage sponge, as we can see right here. The problem with what he's doing right now is that the Blizzard is easily avoidable due to how big the room is, and if he goes any further, then Cervantes can just dip out to the starting room or the entrance of the room and just kind of grip Raikou in. Oh. Drainer can lock the door with the Ring of Peace, and then all of a sudden, Raikou is going to be costing his team a lot of cooldowns so yeah it's it's kind of scary i want to see raikou lead the charge when dampening it actually is high enough for his team to kind of capitalize on the fact that they're going to be investing their damage onto raikou z that that's really intelligent i mean one of the things that is nice about being in this room if you are a mug you can say mom dad uh, it's my room lock him out close the door ring of peace but luckily for us we do not have to think here we have the advantage with a slower paced game that we can ask chat chat together has a combined rating of probably 4,000 10,000 so you think higher you, you don't want to We're, mock twitch chat I'm not mocking I'm <laughs> you not don't mocking. want to mock I'm not mocking oh here we go oh BVP oh. is happening yeah, it looks like they are going to be moving in, just waiting to around 20% dampening. Raikou gets caught into the Asphyxiate stun. Nice ring of peace as well from Drainer, but Raikou's easily able to escape. But the Pompers, they're looking to push through. Are they going to be able to take Raikou down? They did manage to get the Iron Bark from Chaz. I think Raikou should be able to survive here, but this is a good offensive push. And Portal Shield also used Nerd Rage. Double Fear onto Swapsy, onto Chaz. Chaz, or sorry, Swapsy has to shrink it out to get the Tremor Totem he needs and now the pumper's in a good spot raikou 20 percent dampening no temporal shield no iron bark no nothing if they can instantly get out this first ice block things are going to be looking good for the pumpers it's a match point here we're in the grand finals even though it was a slow start there's still a, everything on the line right now for method black if the pumpers just take victory here they're going to close it out four to two although currently drainer in crowd control and nerd rage under fire cervantes makes the trade during that critical moment to stabilize nerd rage's health but because the teams have waited to 23% dampening. Recovering is not going to be a simple and straightforward task. Crowd control is still raining down. Definitely Method Black have the positional advantage here on the open side of this rectangle pillar. And the thing is, the pumpers can't really dictate where the fight goes. That's why we saw that stalemate for so long. But if we keep fighting out here in the open, I, this is Method Black's game. Yeah, this is really good positioning for Method Black. The pumpers really have nowhere to run and hide. Nerd Rage tried to escape, but Swapsy chased him down, forcing out the life cocoon. Die by the sword, still available for Nerd Rage if he needs it. He has his trinket as well. 
trying to push through onto Raikou. Raikou is still having his Temporal Shield. They have to start working through some of those defensives. Chaz is burning out of mana. This might have been the tactic that the Pumpers wanted. Chaz is going to have to use a lot more mana to keep their team alive in this fight. Drainer's still doing quite healthy. And there's a full Cyclone onto Nerd Rage. If there's any follow-up crowd control onto Drainer, they might be able to capitalize on that. Raikou looking for an Ebon Bolt, finding huge damage onto Nerd Rage, who is forced to retreat. Yeah, he is forced to retreat. Nerd Rage down at half health. Drainer still locked in crowd control. Method Black have had complete control of this fight. Now, I would say start to finish, but there wasn't much control for the first five minutes. But now they have full control of the pace of this match. Chaz has burned down about half mana, so there is that lead. That every time they put Drainer on polymorph diminishing return, such as this Hex, he then looks to wave the crane while he's still on a diminishing return, just such as this, and it's a good opportunity opportunity to try and push. I don't like that they're kiting up to the top balcony. That's a much better position for the pumpers. But the black still on match point. The pumpers finally coordinating Ooh. together to get that ice block out of the way. Yeah, Raikou still no temporal shield, no iron bark. They can make the final push. They might be able to kill him on hypothermia. Chaz trying to escape, looking for the regrowth spam on the Nerd Rage to keep him alive. Or sorry, on the Raikou to keep him alive. Nerd Rage dipping down low. Drainer activates the life cocoon. They want to stay offensive in this moment. Raikou still he has his cold snap available. I think he he just wants to hold on to it. And sometimes you'll see Frostmane do this. They wait for the cold snap so they have access to two Frost Novas as well as two Ice Barriers, which can be very important to stay alive. Yeah, definitely, but we see crowd control initiation. It's match point here, ladies and gentlemen, between the Pumpers, the newcomers, the regained power roster. Dark simula simulated crayons have nagged Cervantes as a polymorph, but even off the back of a full duration polymorph, they are unable to connect. Raikou's kiting is too strong. He was able to avoid damage throughout uh -oh, the Chaz. Over, but now they make a swap to the healer. Is Chaz going to fall here in what could be the final moments of the tournament? Drainer uses his trinket aggressively to go after the enemy team with Way of the Crane. His team can't connect. This, this has to be a mistake on Drainer's part. Full cyclone on Drainer. Nerd Rage still in a lot of trouble. Dive of the Sword trying to redirect some of this damage. Deflected. Chaz now into a polymorph. Nice steal there by Cervantes. Drainer doesn't really connect much healing on Nerd Rage. He has to play catch up. He gets wind here. And this is the susceptibility of the Mistweaver Monk as Nerd Rage dips lower and lower trying to escape with that life cocoon. The crowd control has not ended on Drainer. He has to reconnect to Nerd Rage but Swapsy trying to keep this pressure up. Nerd Rage still low, might be able to survive. Raikou trying to get in line of sight to find that kill onto him, but unfortunately with the positioning, I think Nerd Rage will be able to survive, but this is such a scary moment. 43% dampening. I don't think Nerd Rage is going to top off. I, I mean, it's, he's probably not going to. They've got one more way of the crane, but Raikou still has an ice block. So what do you do if you're the pumpers? You have to kill Chaz, and you have to kill him while you're under fire from a Frost Mage and an Ellie. They did manage to snag a Polymorph, but Cervantes is just on a solo mission. Maybe kill the Water Elemental, try and get a victory rush from the Warrior so he can heal himself, but it's just not, he's not going to go back to full health at 46% dampening. Both healers, but this is the way of the Crane push, but they left Nerd Rage behind. Nerd Rage is just chilling it back at the corner while Drainer goes on a solo mission and then gets hexed on the way of the crane. These last two way of the cranes have definitely not been high value for Drainer, but finally connecting here onto Raikou. Thunderstorm denies it. Ring of Peace trying to pin him. Oh, so unfortunate. If that Ring of Peace had knocked Raikou downstairs, maybe it's still going to be an ice block. It might not matter, but Swapsy can carry the team here. It's match point. Swapsy has to dish out all the damage to close this match out while Raikou is under fire. They are out in the open field in the corner. This is perfect for Swapsy to try and close. Do they have enough damage to take down Nerd Rage before Raikou falls? Raikou trying to kite, but now he dragged them on top of his healer. He's susceptible nice. to interrupts. Perfect pummel by Nerd Rage, but now caught in a lightning lasso. Swaps the line of sights, but Cervantes backs him up for at least a couple more seconds. A race against the Temporal Shield. Anti-Magic Zone protects Nerd Rage just a little bit longer, but now a full hex. Maybe it doesn't matter. Raikou can't get healed anymore at 52% dampening. Raikou gets gripped back into the fight. It's a race to the finish. They get the second block, but they've only got 30% HP remaining. Earthshock connects. Swapsy can still carry. It's still on match point. Everything rides on him. Yep, Cervantes into a full polymorph. That solo mission will end, and Chaz actually sat down for a drink. Nerd Rage in so much trouble. Not going to be wanting to move in. Lightning Lasso from Swapsy might be able to take him down. Life Cocoon, the last line of defense for Drainer. The Pumper's trying to close out this series. Raikou doesn't have an ice block left for so long. If Nerd Rage can reconnect, they might have an opportunity. A small moment in the game where they can actually win, but Nerd Rage forced to retreat. Beautiful Thunderstorm there by Swapsy, and now Cervantes, he's been left all alone. 
Yeah, what is he gonna do? Cervantes is trying, it's basically Cervantes has to carry the pumpers and then Swapsy has to carry Method Black. If Cervantes can get enough damage out here, perhaps they just take the whole tournament, but he's under fire, he has no cooldowns left. Drainer is so low on mana, and I think that Method Black are gonna take this to a game seven. One more way of the crane, one more chance to get a kill, one more chance to be the champions. Can the pumpers do it here? Dampening is at critical mass. Chaz is totally they tapped do it. right did it. Take it out. The pumpers are your cup number three champions. Absolutely crazy series as well. And there were so many times where, you know, the pumpers are down by... Uh, sorry, Sid, Sid's pointing to me right there. What, what did you want I was to trying say? to make a joke. Don't worry about it, Rich. The pumpers go 4-2. Yeah, I, I predicted, that, a, predicted a 4-2 score, but in the other team's favor. And I think everything came down to that one map push on Tolveron where they just took Chaz out in a couple seconds. If Chaz didn't misread that situation and was able to keep that, I think that they may have been able to take the entire series. So the Pumpers definitely performed here today, and I'm looking forward to watching them compete in the future. How is that a joke? That wasn't the joke. It's fine. I'll tell you about it. With 132 points, that's not necessarily something that we did expect. That's going to be a very big jump up the ladder for them. Yeah, and they actually managed to pass ABC in the standing. So ABC next week.